Hello and welcome. I hope you enjoyed that little edit there, trying my hand at something new and trying to expand my abilities as a video producer here. So thank you for being patient with this video. It took a while for me to make because, well, frankly, the build didn't change very much going from level 50 to clearing the capstone dungeon to unlock world tier 4 at level 60. And so as a result, I wanted to try and come up with something new here. I was doing a lot of learning and theory crafting about the game because I have been reading up or learning about the game now, reading some external sources or information about the game as a whole on the internet. So wanted to come up with something really cool and creative to add or multiply the build a bit, but I eventually decided, you know what, let's just do the video as it is. There is some changes already, uh, you know, going overboard, we can save that for the last video in this series. So what I'm going to cover today is the legendary powers I've swapped between the original version of this build I showcased in my level 50 video. I'm also going to show you some changes I made to the skill tree. Next, we'll go into my new approach to gearing the character, like what sort of mods I'm looking for on items that has changed since my initial blind section of the playthrough. And finally, I'll be talking about my ideas for the future or kind of some theories that I'm cooking up to push this build to the next level and really ascend it into that status of the best penetrating shot build on the market. So... With this video, I'm going to be assuming that you saw the first video and that you have a general understanding of the build concept. It's penetrating shot, double imbuements, using dark shroud for defensive layer, and using combo point generation, lucky hit procs. So that's the overall concept. If you want a more in-depth explanation of what this build is at a basic level, I strongly encourage you to check out the first video in this series. Now. Let's start off with the legendary powers. So I have made some changes. I've swapped some things around here. First things first, I dropped the victimized healing mod that was on my necklace originally. I sort of realized that this was just overkill because very rarely, even in high tier nightmare dungeons, am I below five potions. And if I am below five potions, it's because I'm fighting one or two really hard elite monsters. And in those moments, the victimized healing doesn't get a ton of value because while well, I have a pretty big health, health pool overall, so 300 health doesn't end up doing that much for me. And as a result, this has just been removed. It's frankly the end game from my experience so far, going up to about tier 30 of Nightmare Dungeons, has shown me that just this is not how the game functions. You don't need sustain on this level, so I've dropped it. If you're going to die, it's because you're going to get CC chained or you're going to get one hit. At least that's been my experience. So victimized healing, it's gone. It was a bit overkill. Instead, on the necklace slot, since it does have that 50% extra legendary power effect, I've added my imbuement skill effects have increased potency against vulnerable targets. This is a mod I had in the original version of this build, but I've just changed it to the necklace slot because I want it to be pumped up a little bit, and because imbuements end up being so much of this character's damage, it's really important to have it on the necklace slot. Maybe even longer term this would go in a weapon, but I still have the penetrating shot split there for right now. Uh, at least right now because I don't have a good roll of this legendary power, and so as a result, even on the weapon, it's pretty lackluster right now. Discussion for later. Maybe this will change, but for right now, this is the amulet mod that I'm going to be rocking. I've also dropped the making an enemy vulnerable has a chance to give critical strike. Uh, this is just, frankly, a low-value legendary power. It's just not good enough compared to the other options out there. Maybe much longer term this would come back because Critical Strike will end up being a bigger scaler for the build. But at least right now and for the foreseeable future, I don't see this coming back. Like I say, it just isn't quite good enough to compete with some of the other mods available uh, for this build. Now... Next, we're going to get into some of the more defensive-focused things, and that is the CC Breaker power that I've put on my boots here, which is becoming injured while crowd control gives you unstoppable for 4 seconds. This effect has a 20-second cooldown. This goes down to 20. I do have a version that's level 20. I was considering putting this on my necklace. That's why I haven't swapped it, as well as I might replace these boots longer term. So 20 seconds is obviously a massive improvement over 40 or even 28. 
So try to get this to be a good roll if possible. And the reason this was added is that if you're into high tier nightmare dungeons, you'll know exactly where I'm going with this. There is so much CC in endgame nightmare dungeons. It is not uncommon without this power to get CC'd by one monster and then be chain CC'd for over five seconds until you inevitably die. So you need some sort of unstoppable or crowd control breaker effect and you need to be able to use it when you are crowd controlled. Now obviously this is unreliable because if I get killed from say 50% HP before I'm actually injured, then this won't go off. I can still be killed through CC in that way. But this is a way to mitigate some of that end game CC I'm running into in high tier nightmare dungeons. It is very prevalent. I would say that this is absolutely an essential power for the build. This is super important. If you don't have a good role for it, put it on your amulet so you get it a little bit more often. Put it on your weapon even. It is that important if you're pushing high level nightmare dungeons. Next, I've added, I've swapped out the unique Mother's Embrace Ring, and I've added this 8% increased dodge chance versus enemies affected by damage over time, and when you dodge, you gain 10 of your primary resource. Admittedly, this is a bit of an experimental one. Uh, I think this is going to get replaced by this legendary power, which is you gain percentage armor uh, for four seconds when you deal enemy form of damage, and it stacks. I'll talk about this a bit more later when I get into the... Uh, gear portion of the video or or a section here but this is something i've been trying out because the poison imbuement applies huge poisons so against single target or like strong elites or bosses i very frequently have poison up or a damage over time effect up and eight percent dodge chance ends up being super powerful because it means i'm consuming less dark shrouds which means any hits i am taking i have much more damage reduction for them and so as a result, uh, the extra dodge chance I think is super valuable. Again, probably not quite as good as the generic armor stacking legendary power, uh, but it's something I wanted to try out because I have a bunch of perfect rolls for this mod. And so as a result, I figure I'd give it a whirl. Next up, I've added this critical strike with core skills. It gives you attack speed. And this is, again, maybe something that if I started to put it into a simming tool would get beat out by other legendary powers like the arrow rain legendary power, the lucky hit chance proc. Um, but this is something, again, I wanted to test out because in general, attack speed feels really good for this build and attack speed just feels really good in general. So I thought adding a little bit more through this legendary power could be helpful. Again, this is one that could be subject to change based on the specific mods that you have on your gear or what stage, like what level you are on the build because attack speed could be more or less valuable compared to something like an arrow rain proc depending on how much base damage you have on your abilities. But this is, again, a new legendary power I'm rocking because attack speed is sweet. Overall, the summary of the changes here is that I've added more crowd control reduction or more damage reduction powers, and I've kind of juggled my offensive powers a bit. So overall, a lot of the offensive powers can be kind of give or take. The only one I would say is an essential swap is this uh, making an enemy vulnerable has a chance for critical strike bonus. This is just not good enough. Like, just that's how it goes. And so this is the only one from the original video that I would say is an essential removal. And then the one essential addition I would say to the build is this piece here about the unstoppable when you're injured in crowd control. So that's all for the legendary powers right here. Next up, let's get into the skill tree. So I have made some changes to the skill tree. They're pretty minor for the most part, but they're worth mentioning. Forceful Arrow. This was originally ranked at 1 out of 5. Oh, and by the way, there's a full skill tree. I have a link in the comments section in the first video if you need a side-by-side -side comparison. So part 1 here, Forceful Arrow, is was 1 out of 5 in that original video. This is now up to 5 out of 5. The extra 4 points just came from, frankly, the renowned bonuses that I hadn't done at that point. So that is just kind of a freebie. You are using Forceful Arrow on single target, and in general, you want to be weaving a single... Uh, basic in between your penetrating shots at the minimum for the extra lucky hit and damage. So having the extra points, even though it maybe doesn't feel good because, oh, it's a basic ability, it's not where my damage comes from. If you're going to be using it 
super frequently, it's still worth scaling it a little bit because, I mean, you're going to use it and this is just going to massively increase the damage on it. Next up, getting over to this section here, there is not a lot of changes. Uh, the big one here is stutter step because it just wasn't getting enough value, plain and simple. I have extra movement speed on my gear now to kind of compensate for this, but just the passive points, the skill tree points that you get are super valuable. You always kind of wish you had a few more. So it just wasn't getting enough value compared to some of the other options. So I dropped it and instead placed it in rugged those three points for the damage reduction against dot effects because damage over time is really insane because of snapshotting in this game which is basically all of the damage over time applies in one hit and it like saves that damage over time it snapshots it in one moment and so the result of this is that you can't really reduce damage over time reactively, at least not in this build because I don't have barriers. So as a result, this damage over time re reduction is super helpful because if I get hit by a poison when I don't have dark shrouds up, it is not uncommon in high tier nightmare dungeons to have it be about 70% of my max HP. So super important to have this. And in general, just poison is, I'm finding to be a really strong uh, in this game. So super helpful to have there's also a lot of nightmare dungeon mods that apply damage over time effects so getting a lot of value out of this one next up i'm going to dark shroud and what i've done here is i had this at a full five out of five before item contribution before and i've completely stripped that away to the minimum one out of five so i can get the extra points here but Basically, the reason for this is that the scaling is so bad for skill levels on this. So each point you give gives 0.4 damage reduction after the initial skill is unlocked. And that means that at a full five uh, stacks of Dark Shroud up, you're getting an extra 2% damage reduction per point, which is just not very good at all. Um, it's not reliable to have the full five stacks. Uh, it's just not good like the scaling is just not good there's better ways to scale damage reduction and passive points are too valuable for that little bit maybe some people will disagree on this or maybe if you're getting one shot you know this is kind of one of the pieces that you could scale up or down depending on how the build is feeling but i have not been finding the extra dark shroud points to be valuable instead i've put those all into my poison imbuement because this skill is just so insane especially for me i'm trying to push high tier nightmare dungeons and this is super crucial for me because a i have this legendary power for damage over time getting dodge chance so having more dot or making damage over time a bigger part of my build is good but part two is just that in these high tier nightmare dungeons if you're facing like as right now i'm level 74 if you're facing a level 85 monster then they are very tanky even the footage from that you know me clearing the capstone dungeon that's level 70 at level 60 it probably showcased this so really good to have extra poison damage as a whole so that's the skill tree changes that have been made. Let's get on to the gear approach next. So in my going into this game, as a reminder, I went in completely blind. I wasn't checking any sort of social media to learn about the game or understand the game. No Reddit, no YouTube, no social media as a whole. So as a result, I didn't really understand how stats work or are applied in this game and as a result some of my poe biases really came back to bite me for this one i came into it thinking okay what are the best stats well life resistance and skill levels are obviously the big three right if i have those three it's going to be awesome and in the first video in this series, there's probably, you know, I went back and looked at it and there's some funny problems with it in the sense that I'm using resistance gems on all my rings. Elemental resistance, for example. I have a ton of elemental resistance on all my gear. And that, again, is that PoE bias coming to play. Well, it turns out resistances are pretty bad. Uh, they, in fact, are really bad. They're basically the blanket worst stat in the game, and the worst stat in the game by an order of magnitude. They are so ultra mega ass. It's, it's crazy. They're so, so bad. Um, if you have any resistances on your gear, try to re-roll it. They're horrible, etc., etc. Don't want to get stuck on this. What is the solution? 
The solution is percentage damage reduction, it's dodge chance, and it's armor. Those are the three main layers defensively. Armor applies to elemental damage, so it takes any elemental or non-physical damage applied to you, it goes 50-50. 50% gets reduced by armor, 50% by resistances. So scaling armor is just a global massive defensive modifier. From there, percentage damage reduction comes into play because that's, again, another layer that you can apply that isn't that 50% part, right? Like armor is only applying to 50% of non-physical damage. Percentage damage reduction is applying to 100% of that, so it's another really good defensive layer. And the last piece is dodge chance. Dodge chance is so, so, so good for this build because if you're dodging attacks, you're not consuming dark shrouds as frequently, you're not taking damage, and you're not getting CC'd by hits, and that is the really big part. If you can dodge the hits that are applying CC, that is so important in high-tier nightmare dungeons. Now... Those are the big three defensive layers, percentage damage reduction, dodge chance armor. And that's been reflected in how I've changed my gear. Like these pants are a great example. Maximum life is still at play and still a great stat, but I have dodge chance and damage reduction on this piece of gear. On my boots, I have dodge chance. On my chest plate, I have damage reduction percentage as well as percentage armor on my helmet i have percentage armor because these are the stats that actually contribute more defensively than resistances finally let's get into the offensive stats the big three offensive stats for me are lucky hit skill levels and cooldown reduction and the big one i want to call out here is cooldown reduction because the imbuements end up being so much damage in this build and having cooldown reduction and more frequent imbuements is super important as a result because in high tier nightmare dungeons you will sometimes not one shot the elites through just a shadow imbuement aoe explosion combined with the penetrating shot you're going to need to apply poison imbuements and if there's multiple elite enemies you're going to need to apply poison imbuements to multiple enemies and maybe multiple attacks to each enemy and the result is that you need that cooldown reduction to keep these skills flowing and to keep the imbuements flowing because so much damage comes from it remember we have this necklace and uh, legendary power here about imbuements they're a huge part of the build more cooldown reduction means more imbues, means more damage, and just, it's better overall. Cooldown reduction was the one piece I didn't know about earlier. Lucky hit chance I knew about. Uh, gem, like, skill levels I knew about. Those were no-brainers that I went into it with. But those are the big three stats with cooldown reduction kind of being the surprise one. After that comes vulnerable damage, critical strike chance, attack speed, dexterity and then your generic damage stats like damage to close enemies or damage to injured enemies or whatever that is roughly the order after those big three again it's vulnerable damage crit speed or attacks crit critical strike chance or attack speed dexterity and then generic damage stats after those big three that's the gearing approach Next, let's really quickly get into my ideas for the future. So this is level 74 right now. I'm gonna be pushing this build more and the build is gonna change as it gets to higher level because, well, frankly, you don't need or you do need certain stats more or less as you push into the higher levels. So what is my ideas for the future? Well, part one, I haven't talked about the Paragon board at any point in this video yet, and I won't be talking about it in depth here because I still, this is still pretty much uncharted ground for me. I've just been going about it in the approach of just taking what seems like the best. Um, I'm taking the nodes that feel right, you know, core skill damage, dexterity, that feels right. The build uses it. It feels right. I took it. That's what I've done for basically the whole Paragon board so far. Vulnerable damage, stacking, yeah, sounds great. Core skill damage, sounds great. Maximum life, sounds great. I've just been taking the stats that feel right for the build, but I'm sure that there are tricks of the trade that I'm missing and that I'm going to try and learn from other content creators. There's either tech or strategies for more optimally applying Paragon points that I should be using. I just haven't learned about this yet because I've been taking on other parts of the game in terms of learning. So this is definitely an area for improvement. Right now it's bonus stats. It should be an instrumental part of the build longer term. Next, the other piece I have to figure out is, do I drop my basic skill? I mean, 
from what I understand and from some of the build guides I've like watched or read up on online, a lot of people recommend dropping basic skills. I think it's a little different for Rogue just because of the combo point system that I am currently using. And just to be candid, I hate Inner Sight. I think this is such a gimmick. I understand it's a really strong specialization, but I just I just hate it. It's like it's like gangplank barrels in League of Legends. Either you love it or you hate it. You for me, I really dislike those kind of mini games to make a character work, and I just really hated it. I did not like Inner Sight at all. I was not finding it enjoyable. So that really limits me because if I drop my basic skill, I need to drop combo points. Do I go to preparation? Well then I need an ultimate. So it becomes this really weird puzzle of you know, dropping the basic skill because it's also how I apply vulnerable to single target in encounters. Like the build is very much so structured around basic skills, but from everything I'm seeing online, dropping up your basic skill is a huge advantage in many builds. So this is also something I'm grappling with. It would require substantial changes to actually make that happen and make it worth it. So something I'm kind of wrestling with or theory crafting around right now. Next up is a concept for scaling the build I'm considering, which is, I think dexterity stacking is a super underappreciated concept on Rogue. Like from some basic napkin math I've done at level 100, I think you could get around 3000 dexterity. I think that's a realistic goal for an end game, well geared level 100 character. And with that in mind, 3000 dexterity is 30% base dodge chance. On top of that, you start stacking things like the 12% dodge chance that I get when I've recently used a cooldown from Agile, and you're getting to really high dodge chances, as well as a huge amount of generic damage for the Rogue. So I think dexterity stacking is maybe going to be an awesome way to scale this build. I would need to compare it and like kind of math out how it would compete against just getting other damage modifiers. But it's something I'm playing with and considering for the ultra late game like best version of this build. Next up, actually that's everything here. What am I saying? Dex stacker is the last thing I wanted to talk about. Um... Dodge Chance and the reason Dex Stacker is so good, Dodge Chance helps Dark Shroud, consumes it less. I've talked about this in previous parts of this video, but again, Dodge Chance is really good so that the Dark Shrouds are up more often so you get more damage reduction against the big hits more often. But that is all for now. Those are the big changes I made to the build overall. I hope that you are playing this build and having fun. And please, if you are, tell me your experiences with it. Leave a comment talking about what you've liked, what you've disliked, any sort of differences from this build that I've made, uh, your own conclusions you've come to. Just share your thoughts about it. I would love to hear from people that are playing either this exact build or something similar. If you're playing some kind of penetrating shot or bow-based rogue build like Rapid Fire, uh, for Rogue, please tell me about your experiences in the comments. I would love to hear about them. I will be still, I'm still intending to create a final, complete, like best version of this build, the ultra min maxed Giga Chad version. Uh, that will probably be completed when the character is between level 85 or 90. I am already feeling like the game is kind of done, but by level 85 or 90, I'll have scaled my build a little bit more, I'll have scaled Nightmare Dungeons a little bit more, and I'll have enough sort of surplus gear to do theory crafting across various different concepts I have right now. So probably you can expect the final build guide to be done when I'm level 85 or 90. And... My promise to you is that my theory crafting is going to deliver the best penetrating shot build in the game. From what I've seen online, I feel confident guaranteeing that. I don't think there is an awesome, certified, much better penetrating shot build than this, conceptually at least. So I'm confident that I can make something really special that frankly no one else can compete with. What this means is that the final build version, that level 85 to 90 version, might take some time to get posted. Uh, I really want to like math it out and make sure that what I'm showcasing and if I am going to be making an audacious claim like the best penetrating shot in all of the best penetrating shot build in all of Diablo 4, well, I want to really make sure that I can put my money where my mouth is and back it up with a super strong build. It means it might take a while to post it, 
The goal will be before season one launch is guaranteed. That is kind of the timeline I'm working with. If I can't match that, then I suck. <laughs> I don't know what to say other than that. But the result is that when that build is posted, you can be you can trust that it is going to be an absolute monster of a build. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz really means a lot to me as a kind of amateur YouTuber. And it really means a lot if we are going to show the Diablo community the best penetrating shot build in action. Thanks for watching. Take care.